imagine you can only think clearly when breathing through the right nostril. <coughs> and so, you can breathe completely through the right nostril, but it takes effort, and as soon as you stop concentrating on it, you forget to start breathing through both to various degrees, and you notice they, they do trade off in uh, dominance. How the mind and the submind I see working, so you can control it, but it takes effort, and uh, rarely are you at 100% of either one. Um, yes, and the submind I'm considering a uh, adversary, but the extent that you eat more than that, eat more than you really did want to eat in your truest, clear mind when you're looking back on it, that's the submind operating uh, to the degree to which you operate. And uh, getting on to a different topic, um, I've talked before about how temperature is a uh, abstraction uh, that we use to describe the aggregate of, of all collisions against our bodies. And uh, so collisions are the, are the basic idea, and uh, we describe them as temperature in our abstract uh, interpretation of them. We see that aspect of it. We, we s that facet of collision called temperature is the facet which fascinates us. And, and so, yes, we have a special name for it, like Eskimos with the snow. And similarly sound, which is uh, getting hit with something, it, again, is the motion of particles. Um, now, why doesn't sound seem hot? The heat is the carrier wave, and the sound is the modulated overtones that ride on the base level uh, heat. And so if it's 50 degrees in the room, that's the base level. It doesn't keep changing. It doesn't impart information to you. Uh, but within that, there is a uh, modulated code. Similarly, uh, when we look at a person or think of what life is, we think of a person. But when a macrobiologist thinks of life, they think of something spending millions of years and comes to very many people. It could be thought of as expanded steel uh, mesh flooring where the life is steel and the holes, which are nothing in the ultimate sense, define the people. And so they are not a material difference, they are merely an organizational difference, and uh, to us we appear so important that that, I think, more closely describes it. Similarly, um, money is another abstraction uh, that is uh, deceptive. If you do not approach it correctly, you will assume it has powers that it does not have. It's merely a symbol, and it's hard to see money in that light because of its concrete nature in our society. Uh, but it could be replaced by pencil marks in a ledger, and nothing would be any different. Uh, it's merely quantifying value, and everyone bickers over the value, uh, but the units are set because they are interchangeable, because they've been quantified. Uh, movement of money through the economy, what does that represent? And it is, uh, could be thought of as a lake, and everyone has a cistern, and they can do work to pump water up the cistern, which causes pollution, and then they have that water, which they could then deliver to other people. The idea of charity would be to flow it down to everyone else, and that actually causes pollution. The only thing to do to sequester the pollution, which it represents, is to not release it and to never release it, which would be the equivalent of burning money if you were to have it and wanted to not harm with it because all of the money is a symbol. It's the symbol of ecologic doom. Um, so it's kind of like an endothermic and uh, exothermic reactions, really, where you have these uh, high energy molecules floating around and looking for a catalyst. And um, that's what we are in many sense. Which brings us to uh, entropy. Um, Entropy would suggest that things move towards a disordered state. That's what we see, and that's what we speak of as the arrow of time. Uh, can you store data with a bunch of pieces all in a row? You can't. You can also store data with things scattered about. Uh, is a little misleading. For example, they say things move towards disorder, but what about gravity, which draws things together into one big lump? Does the escape velocity of the particles in the Big Bang exceed that of the gravitational pull, such that things won't all get drawn back together, because if they do all get drawn back together, that is the opposite of entropy, that is the reunion of homogeneity. The way they can think that that's not going to happen, because you would assume that gravity would eventually overcome any inertia over time, is the concept of the limit, and not the case, because, for example, if you add up one half plus one third plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus one thirty seconds all the way out forever, it won't equal infinity, it'll equal like two or something. Uh, what is no information? When things are completely non-moving, then you would, in theory, not be able to store anything in them because you couldn't even look at it. It would be completely dead, and there would be nothing to it. Um, but 
then what if you increase the amount of space that those dead things were sitting in? And then you know even less about it because you wouldn't even know that it was in this one place. You don't know where it is. You don't even know where it is in this huge place. And so there really is no bottom to the whole system. I know. I'm not talking about it.